Hi, this is Graham Bell with Real Intent. I have the pleasure of speaking with Lisa Piper, Senior Technical Marketing Manager. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Graham. It's the middle of November. We're just about ready to uh, th start thinking seriously about Thanksgiving. But we were talking a little bit uh, off camera about the issue of ex-pessimism. Uh, what is ex-pessimism and uh, why do we care about it? Well, ex-pessimism is something that happens in gate-level simulations. Uh, the simulator is pessimistic in the sense that it will tell you that a signal does not resolve to a known value, whereas in real hardware that signal is always going to resolve to a known value. So it's pessimistic in its results. Just take an example. Consider the case of a two-input MUX that has a select signal and data, two data inputs. So if the select signal is an X value, then as with you know, any MUX or decoder, if, if all the inputs have the same value, you know the output is going to be that value. So in the case of the two input MUX, if both inputs are a 1, you know the output's going to be a 1. Well, your simulator is going to tell you that it's an X, that it doesn't know what the value is. So, so why, why do we care about this? Well, we care about pessimism because pessimism is one of the reasons why gate-level simulation functionality doesn't match the RTL functionality. And you have to start from the functional error and trace back in time to find the reason that the simulation differs. This can be very time-consuming and it's also very error prone. And the thing that's particularly error prone is when you're tracing back in time, if you find an X value, you then have to determine is the X value a result of pessimism or is it simply the propagation of an X? That propagation of an X could have been missed in RTL. It could have been masked by what's called optimism. So at the gate level, you need to fix pessimism by forcing it to the known value, but you can't just force any X. You need to make sure that it's actually pessimism and not optimism that you are correcting. What are some of the customer experiences around this problem? Well, a lot of the customers, they still do the manual approach of trying to trace back and the complaints we hear is that it takes months to get their gate level simulation to match the functionality of the RTL simulation. We also hear from the people that do it that they have a constant fear of having missed something because the net list is very unfamiliar to them. They're tracing back, determining exactly where the point of pessimism is can be difficult and determining the right value can be difficult. So they don't sleep well at night when they're having to do this. The other common popular solution is to do random initialization of all uninit flops. This in essence removes the X's from the design. The problem with this is it can mask bugs. For example, if one of those optimism bugs made it into your gate level sims, by removing those X's, you're also going to miss catching that optimism bug. And when you randomly initialize, you're not going to be matching what hardware is going to have because hardware could take a different value. So there is a big risk in doing random initialization. And so that's why customers have come, come to us asking for a different solution. The other complaint we hear is that some of the solutions that have um, come out take so much, have so much overhead in terms of simulation and especially memory. So customers want a solution that doesn't slow down the simulator to unacceptable terms. What are the requirements for an effective solution? Of course, performance and uh, memory. 
need to be within reason and also you need to have an easy use model. And in the case of pessimism, one of the most critical things is accuracy. You need to get that accuracy without tremendous overhead on your simulator performance and memory. What makes um, the Real Intent Ascent XV solution different in the marketplace? What makes it unique? So what we do is we generate simulation add-ons that will do the correction of pessimism. What's different is we do a static analysis on the design itself prior to even getting to the simulator. And in the static analysis, we identify the potential pessimism points in the design. So we're not having to monitor every single node in your design. We know ahead of time exactly where the pessimism points might be and the types of stimulus that will trigger that pessimism on that node. So when you actually get to the simulator, we monitor those nodes and if there is an X on the node, we will look to see if that is indeed a pessimism X and if so, we will correct it to the value that would be seen in real hardware. We don't arbitrarily correct any X that's on an identified pessimism node. We actually confirm that yes, this is really pessimism. So you, if an optimism X occurred, we would not correct it. Lisa, how can our audience find out more about the Ascent XV? Well, you can go to the Real Intent website. We have contact information there. We also have complete data sheets. Lisa, thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you.